Well, what's up, everybody? Hope you're doing absolutely phenomenal, man. <laughs> I really do. I want to, as always, welcome you to Wisdom University. So excited about you being with and connecting with us, especially those of you that are watching us live. I am so excited about our time together tonight. Listen, we're coming to the conclusion of this series of teachings called Wisdom University. I'm going to finish the, I'm going to finish this series of teachings on next week. So, the last Wednesday of the year, I'm going to be finishing this series. Listen, if the, if 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 you believe, if you're claiming by faith that you that you are wiser now than you were when this series began. Drop some fire in that chat. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And so we're 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 really we're really excited about this next year for you. We believe it's going to be better. It's going to be wiser, and uh, we're really really excited about tonight's teaching or whenever you choose to watch this. Uh, we're exploring this idea tonight, and I think we need it. As we're just a couple of days away from Christmas. So some of you may already be around and <laughs> be around family or maybe you're you're headed to over the holiday season. Uh, family going to spend some extended time with them. Check this out. We need to have a conversation about wisdom for family. <laughs> If you're feeling this already, put yes in that chat. Wisdom for family. We're, we're going to have a discussion there because if we need wisdom to manage any relationship, we need wisdom to manage the complexities of family relationships. Now, before I leap into this lesson, there's a scripture I'm going to read in Proverbs because we're going to see how can the book of Proverbs give us wisdom for family management. Now, before I do that, a couple of things. One, I want you to press that like button. Please do that. And listen, I need those of you who are part of our tribe, a part of our community. I see you doing it from time to time in the chat to encourage people throughout the live to press the like button. That doesn't mean you like me. Hopefully you like what we're teaching and it's adding value to you. But what that does is that helps us help other people. It's that simple. When when you are pressing that like button, when you're engaging in the chat, it helps us take advantage of the YouTube and the Facebook algorithm and it puts this feed in front of people who may not even be familiar with what's going on on this channel and what's happening through this ministry and um, it may add value to them. This is how some people, this is how some of you who are watching may have been helped. So that I'm going to ask you to do that. The next thing I always ask you to do is whenever you're watching this, if it adds value to you, like if you're watching it live when it's over or if you're watching a pre-record, I mean, um, a, a re-record at a later date, um, if it adds value to you, I just want you to send it to somebody else. That's it. That's it. Because I, I want to add value to as many people as possible. This is why we have so many avenues to do that, one of which being my coaching and mentorship program called Daniel's Den, where I coach and mentor people. I'm not just a pastor. I'm a coach. been a coach for several years. I call myself a pastorpreneur, just like the Apostle Paul, right? Did ministry made tense. All of Jesus' disciples were pastorpreneurs. He got nobody just from the church community, all of them. Uh, we're engaged in the marketplace in some kind of entrepreneurial endeavor. And so ministry and marketplace is my mission field. And so I'm not this or that. I'm this and that. And so are so many of you. And so through that program, man, I help people unlock and unleash their potential. Very simple. I help you discover, develop and deploy your potential. And I help people do that by helping them get better spiritually, emotionally, relationally and in their leadership. And so if you're part of the den, drop big energy in the chat. You can go to DanielsDen.com to find out more about that man. And um, you can also become a part of our text community where I there are times where I'm, I'm getting thoughts in my devotional time. I'm sending it out to, to people who are on that list. And so that number is coming on the screen also. Just the ways that we want to add value to people. But tonight, let's get with it. We need to have a conversation about how Proverbs can give us wisdom for family. Here's a scripture I want to read for you, okay? Uh, I want to read this scripture, and then I want, I want to frame it with a little theology. Proverbs 18, 24 says, 
One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. Stop. Stop. You're saying, Darius, wait a minute. I thought we were talking about family. We are talking about family. We're going to get to that in a minute. We're going to read the rest of the verse in a minute. But Proverbs 18, 24 says, one who has unreliable friends. Now, notice what he did not, uh, did not say. Watch this. He didn't say one who has no friends. He says one who has unreliable friends. Which means this, all of us has to have to ask the question, are the ones we have the ones we need? Come here. Come here. Are the ones we have the ones we need? <laughs> he didn't. He, no, it's not. He didn't say one who has no friends. Do we need to have friends? Absolutely. Of course. I talk about that in relational intelligence. We need to have friends. But. What the text says is one who has unreliable friends. So the question, watch this. The question isn't whether or not we have them. The question is whether or not the ones we have are reliable. Watch this. And reliability is relative. So when I talk about whether or not they're reliable, this is what I'm getting at. Are they, are they reliable in the areas they should be reliable in? Are they reliable in the areas they should be reliable in? And this is what Proverbs says. If a person doesn't have that, they soon come to ruin. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say they immediately come to ruin. He said they soon come to ruin. Watch this. It's easy to assume that just because something isn't, hasn't happened immediately, that it won't happen eventually. Ooh, no, that not only applies to the negative, that also applies to the positive. If you're feeling me, say yes. Just because it hasn't happened immediately doesn't mean it won't happen eventually. Delay is not denial. That applies to the positive, that, that applies to blessings, that also applies to burdens. Let me pause because I want to encourage somebody right here at Wisdom University, and I want to encourage you with this truth. Here it is. It is not profound, but it is, in terms of the phraseology, it's not profound, but it is deep. He may not come when you want him. <laughs> but he's always come here on time. So just because something hasn't happened immediately doesn't mean it isn't going to happen eventually. And when you are believing God for something and expecting God to come through in uncommon and unique ways in you, for you and through you, we must develop a mentality that gives us this mantra. It hasn't happened yet. Has the door open? Not yet. Has the turnaround happen? Not yet. Has the endeavor been launched? Not yet. Is the marriage improved? Not yet. Has the child come to their senses? Not yet. Because that's the mantra of those of us with a mentality that God will do what he said. So just because it hasn't happened immediately doesn't mean it won't happen eventually. Same thing applies here to this, this principle that uh, the writer is talking about in this passage. He says, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, not immediately, but at some point, watch this, watch this, inevitably, we will experience the implications of having people around us who are unreliable. Watch this, and reliability is like medicine. You don't need it all the time, but when you need it, you need to be able to reach for it, and it's there. Come on now. Right. Because if you are a if you are pursuing and if you are a person that's obtaining a degree of spiritual and emotional and relational health. Right. Then you don't then you're not a codependent person. And if a person's struggling with codependency, we aren't we aren't judging you. But we're, what I'm saying is if a person is not codependent, you don't need everything from your friends all the time. If a person needs everything from their friends all the time. There's something deeper going on there. If you're feeling this, say yes. Put yes in that chat. Okay, so check this out then. And I, I really want you to feel me. If that's, if that's, 
if that's if that is true, then we don't need our friends to be reliable all the time because we don't need them all the time. We may want to be with them, but we don't need. But when we need them, we need to be able to believe when I reach for you, you'll be there. And some of you, I can just sense this right now, have been going through seasons. Some of you, some of you right now, uh, some of you right now, you probably need to share this you probably, or text somebody or you go out of that chat, press that share button. You can text this link to somebody right now. That X, if you're on YouTube, that X in that upper right hand corner, um, you tap that X, you come out of the chat, you press that arrow to say share and you can text this to somebody right now because I believe some I believe some people need this. This is help for the holidays, y'all. This is help for the holidays. And I believe some of you are in seasons where you in a season where you finally come to the realization. I'm the one that people always have to reach for. And that I don't have enough people in my life that when times get heavy and hard, come on, that I can reach for and I know they'll be there. Now, you don't you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. This this is just a metaphor. Right. So this is my phone. This is my phone right here. OK. So. I want you some of you. This is just a metaphor. You can do this mentally. But right now, I don't know how many contacts I got in my phone. I don't even know how to see what the number is. Pray for me. I don't have a tech anointing. I need it, though. Some of y'all got to help your boy. <laughs> <laughs> so if you know how to do that, DM me on IG or something, tell me how to do it. But here's the point. So I don't know how many contacts I got in my phone, but this is what I do know. I do know if it all goes bad, there's a very small percentage that I can reach for and I know will be there. You don't hear what I just said. So watch this. There one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Pause. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. What? There is. So so why here would the writer Proverbs, this proverb written by Solomon, say there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother? He would say that. Watch this. This is wisdom for family. Let's turn the corner now. He says that because of this, guys, because he knows that brothers aren't always going to behave like brothers. Come here. Uh, that, that you're going to need a friend that sticks closer than a brother because brothers don't always behave like brothers. And we can insert any family member in the place and in that space where it says brother. So we can say mothers don't always behave like mothers and fathers don't always behave like fathers and siblings don't even behave like siblings. Listen to me. This is not family bashing. Family is God's idea. The term that God uses to describe himself and the term that he gives us to address him is the term father. When it is a relational term because God wants us to see him not just as our creator, but as our father. Mm. And that's some people struggle because they haven't shifted from a mentality that sees God as a creator who created them as opposed to a father who loves them. Watch this. Come here. Come here. Come here. If I'm teaching, if you're getting this, put some fire in that chat. Come here. I don't believe you can really have strong faith if you don't see God as a good father. I feel like I need to do something right now. I don't know if I need to. If I do, if I jump, it'll be weird. But <laughs> did you hear what I just said? I said, I don't think we can have strong faith if we don't see God as a good father. Because a good father wants to make good on his word. So when he says, I'll supply all your need according to your riches in according to, to my riches in glory. You can receive that when you know 
It's a good father saying that. <laughs> when he says, no weapon. Not, not, not most, not many. He said, not one. No weapon. None. No weapon. No weapon at work. No weapon at home. No weapon in the body. No weapon in the mind. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He's saying it because he's a good father. The dominant word used to describe believers in the New Testament is family. So family's God's idea. When, cre when he created the human species, he created Adam first, looked at it and said, it's not good that man should be alone. And because God's a God of excellence and not average. Uh oh, did you hear that? Because he's a God of excellence and not a God that's average. Good is not good enough for God. He said, it's not good that man should be alone. So if it's not good enough, he's not done. And so he, he makes a woman and then gives them the responsibility to be physically and metaphorically fruitful and multiply. So God loves family, creates family. But because we live in an imperfect world and we're dealing with imperfect, sometimes well-meaning, well-intentioned, but imperfect people, those imperfections impact our family relationships. So for me, come on, as, as some of your pastor as some of your spiritual teacher and as some of your mentor and coach what I, what I'm doing today is I want to equip you using proverbs with wisdom to handle some of those dynamics if your family doesn't have these dynamics then this message might not be for you right now for your own life but you still need to listen because you're probably going to run into someone who at some point is going to expose that they're dealing with family dynamics and this revelation will empower you to be able to help them. This is the way I teach. This is the way I teach people at our church, Change Church. I say, listen, guys. Some bread is for you to eat. Some bread that I give you is for you to eat. Or the bread that God gives you through a teacher is for you to eat. And then some bread that God gives you through a teacher is for you to feed other people when they're hungry. And this is where this is why I'm, don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Somebody just drop an emoji right now in the chat that describes how you feeling. <laughs> just put an emoji right there. Some of y'all got the, these the head blown emojis and exclamation points. And some of you, you got lions in there. No, no, no. Think about that. So guys, guys, listen, listen, li listen, Linda, listen, Linda, listen, Linda, listen, Linda. We can't miss this. And many people are ineffective when it comes to helping other people. Next year, I'm doing this. Uh, I think I'm gonna call it Rock the World with Words Boot Camp. I'm gonna spend five. I'm going gangster old school. I'm not playing. Five days. I'm gonna spend five days training people who are really serious about changing other people's life. Yep, five, I'm, I'm just going to do a five-day virtual boot camp in um, January. But the point that I'm making, many people are ineffective. It, it doesn't mean they don't want to help other people, but they're ineffective. And when you're ineffective at assisting others, you're going to be unfulfilled because your purpose is all about helping other people. And you'll only be happy when you, you only experience fulfillment, excuse me, when you're accomplishing your purpose. Fulfillment doesn't come from the acquisition of possessions. Fulfillment comes from the accomplishing of purpose. This is why for many people, no matter what they acquire, no matter what they possess, they still are not happy because happiness doesn't come from the acquisition of possessions. It comes from the accomplishing of purpose. Let me let me get ready. Let me turn this corner here. But many people are ineffective at helping other people because they, they aren't they, they have good intentions. They want to, but, but they aren't equipped. They don't know how to get bread to give. They only know how to receive bread to eat. So as soon as they hear a teaching, they feel like, ah, that's not relevant for my life. They turn it off. What does that mean? It makes you irrelevant for other people's lives. Talk that talk. Holy Spirit. If you only listen to things that you feel like are relevant for you, it means at some point you're going to be irrelevant to everybody else. Woo! 
So I read and I listen to stuff and I listen to people who are single and I ain't been single in 20 years. I don't need that for me. I need that for others. I hope I'm making sense here. So here's the point. The point is families are impacted by the imperfection that exists in the world. So we got imperfect family members. And sometimes those imperfections are like benign. They don't really, they agitate us, but they don't impact us. But sometimes those imperfections are not. And so here's a reality now. I'm not bashing family, but I feel like we paint such a perfect picture of family that we don't equip people with wisdom on how to manage family. And somebody is going to Christmas dinner in a couple of days and you, you like everybody there. But then some of you are going to Christmas dinner and it is like, it's about to be interesting. That's facts. So it says there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Because we're going to need them because sometimes the people that are family don't always behave like it. So Dr. Darius, give me some wisdom. Can, can I... Can, can, can I give us some wisdom on how to manage some of these family dynamics? Here's number one. Here's number one. You ready? Don't take it personal. <laughs> I know some of you are saying that is easier said than done. I'm just telling you, don't. When I say don't take it personal. I'm not saying that, it's, that it won't impact you personally. I'm not saying that it won't feel personal. What I am saying, that you are simply the object that's being impacted by their, or the individual that's being impacted by their imperfections, but you are not the cause and the creator of those imperfections. So break it down. Can I break it down? So in the Bible, that we see in the this is what we see in the first family, the very first family. We see what's called sibling rivalry. With Cain and Abel, here's what's scary. Abel had no issue with Cain. Cain had an issue with Abel. Abel did nothing. Watch this evil, unhelpful, immoral, unbiblical to Cain. Abel did nothing but live his best life. That's all he did. He tried to be the best version of himself and live his best life. That's all Abel did, right? If this is true, put facts. He didn't do anything to Cain. Cain got upset with Abel because God accepted Abel's offering and didn't accept Cain's. And God had to say to Cain, Cain, you gave me from among what you had. Abel gave to me first. And because I'm not a God that's desperate, I want what's right. I don't want what's left. So the way you gave to me, Abel, says something to me about the way you prioritize me. So just because you offered it doesn't mean I accepted it. So Abel did nothing to Cain. But Cain gets jealous and he has this fit of rage with Abel. And he takes Abel's life literally. Now, this is what happens with us more often than not. It is that Cain doesn't attack us literally. Cain attacks us emotionally. Oh, Cain doesn't throw rocks. Cain throws words. Come here. I know I'm in the house today. I know, I know I'm in the house. You don't want to miss this. He throws words. And those words sometimes can take the life out of us, the vitality out of us, the strength out of us. So if Abel did nothing to provoke that with Cain, that's Cain's problem. Abel just happened to be the, watch this, Abel's success. Just happened to trigger, I say this all the time, Cain's emotional sickness. This is not your fault. If your parent is showing blatant favoritism, it's not your fault. If you have a sibling for whatever reason that has, has an issue with you, it's not your fault. 
if your father in some way is advocating his responsibility. It's not, it's not your fault that you have chosen to evolve in your thinking and some people have not. Don't take it personal. There's nothing you could do to fix that. They have to want to fix it themselves. And you're going to be a lot less stressed, a lot less disappointed during this holiday season if you don't take it personal. Let's let that marinate. Say la. Let's sit with that for a minute. Respectfully. Number one, don't take it personal. Here it is. Number two, this is wisdom. Are y'all ready for this? Right? Now, now, do you want me to just, do, do you really want to be helped here? Or, or do you just want like some religious platitudes? You just want some, you know, biblical nursery rhymes. If you want real help, I want you to put keep it real in that chat. Don't take it personal. Here's number two. Don't take it public. Woo! <laughs> Listen to me. I know we all have a tendency and a desire to vent. But I can. I am telling you right now, one of the indications of the emotional health of an individual is their, watch this, is the discipline that they're able to exercise in governing their own soul when they have a desire to take something public that, that watch this, that should be kept private. Oh my, oh my. Now when I say don't take it public, I'm not talking about a refusal to expose something that needs to be exposed uh, so that it can be addressed. Like if someone's committing a crime or there's some sort of molestation, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm talking and then I'm talking about taking it to the people it needs to be taken to so that can be addressed. Right. So I don't want you to think I'm talking about things of that particular nature. Right. But I, I am talking about these family dynamics, these issues that impact us emotionally because we're human. But I can tell the emotional intelligence of a person, the emotional health. Like so for us in Daniels, then we, we use the term in my coaching group. Emotional intelligence, but what I'm really trying to do is to get people to wellness, not just intelligence. I want you to have more than awareness and management, which is primarily what emotional intelligence gives you. It gives you self-awareness, it gives you social awareness, and it gives you, uh, and then there's management, right? So whether it's socially or with yourself, it's management. Like, I think we can move from management to deliverance. Ah, where I'm not always wrestling with managing out of control emotions some of the time that we can get to the place where, they, where, where those I'm not as triggered as easily and I'm not triggered as long. Anyway, here's the point. Man, have you ever seen somebody going through a breakup and you can tell they're going through a breakup without announcing they're going through a breakup? They start like reposting all of these subs, sub tweets, right? Sub posts. You know what I mean? <laughs> they have a breakup then all of a sudden they post like 12 pictures you don't miss a good thing until it's gone <laughs> you didn't want to see me now so you won't see me later don't take it public why because now you invite people into an issue and when you invite people, when you expose an issue to people, that's not their concern. They feel the right to speak into and have an opinion about it. And what happens is this. Woo. There are some people who love you and are so loyal to you. That even if you fix the thing you posted about. Even if you fix it. If you reconcile it, if you all get help, if everything is sweet now, those people that are on the outer circle of your relationship, they're still going to be shady. It complicates fixing it. Now, let me let me emphasize again, because like sometimes um, I know we live in a culture where, and I need to talk about this at some point, a culture where it's like we're conditioned not to, not to, not to lock in. Um, Dr. Del Toro and I did a, and if you hadn't seen that man, Wisdom With Your Words, 
Dr. Del Toro and I, we did a tag team uh, session on last week. And uh, as I'm looking at some of the comments that some of the people were making, I was saying to myself, did they, did they actually listen to what we just said? Like, I think we said something about um, steps you should take before you actually need in-person, like, coaching, something like that. And then someone was like, yeah, that's all good, but you still need somebody. And we were like, we said you need somebody. We just said that, that you can get their mind first before you get them. Anyway, come back. Somebody say, come back, yes, come back, come back. Okay. Usa. All right. Here's my point. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that we should condone unbiblical, unhealthy behavior, not report illegal behavior. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about things that don't necessarily fall in that category that people can sometimes go public with and that makes reconciliation more difficult. Don't take it personal. That's number one. Don't take it public. That's number two. I'm out of time. If you're ready for number three, put three in that chat. I'm waiting. I'll wait. <laughs> Don't take it personal. Don't take it public. Here's number three. Don't take it past that day. I hope you have absolutely no issues during the holiday season. I hope everything is sweet. I hope you experience shalom, the peace of God. I hope you uh, recognize and express appreciation for the gifts of the great people that God's put in your life. I hope you're grateful that you have, you have another chance to celebrate Christmas. But listen to me. Are y'all listening? If you're listening, say yes. It may not be that way. Someone may say something. Someone may do something. And watch this. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't happen just to you. Some, I know, I, I, you know, I've experienced this. I used to experience this growing up. It wasn't always that something happened to me. It would be sometimes that there, there, there would be other people in my family who would do things that would hurt other people in my family that I love deeply. And sometimes that made me more upset and that caused me more grief than if it would have been me. I'd be like, no, nah, don't do my grandmama that way now. That right there make me want to lay hands in Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I remember that growing up. But here's the thing. The enemy wants to allow the offense that we experience in our present to inhibit us from going where God wants to take us in our future. He, he doesn't want it. He doesn't, he doesn't orchestrate it happening to us just so it can happen to us. What he does today is not about today. The hurt he inflicts today is not about today. The hurt he inflicts is about what he's trying to stop tomorrow. It's how he's trying to destroy us tomorrow. Don't take it past that day. When you walk out of that house, say, I'm leaving. I'm leaving it there. Or when they, dearest, where do you get the, Jesus told his disciples that when he sends them out of Matthew chapter 10, 2 by 2, he said, listen, when you go into a house, you go into these villages, you go into these places where you're trying to help and add value to people. He says, listen, if they don't receive you, this is what you do. Take your peace. Let your peace return to you. Glory. He said, let your peace return to you. Don't leave your peace there. Don't take it with you. Don't take it past that day. Make a decision. I'm going to leave this here. Because I will not let the enemy. And I'm praying that over you. Believing. And hoping that, you won't only, that we won't only just apply these principles during the holiday season. This, this wisdom for family. We can apply these principles all year long. And I believe in God that he's going to give you the wisdom, right? So whenever, whenever I teach people on, like, when God speaks to them, whether it's through the word or whatever, whether it's through the word or through promptings and intuitive 
and, and our intuition. There's revelation, that's what God said. There's interpretation, that's what does it mean. Then there's application. How do I apply this? And that's where you need a personal relationship with God. I can give you the revelation. I can even help you with interpretation. But application is going to be different for everybody based on your context. And that's where you need a relationship with God, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, because, look at me, because if not, we will end up making idols out of the Bible, and idols out of Bible teachers. It's some stuff, only God helps you with. Somebody put facts in that chat. Well, listen, guys, we've got one more lesson for Wisdom University. And and here it is. I think we not uh, here it is. I, I think it's very important not not just to value natural family. We should. Right. We should. They're gifts from God. We should also value those people that don't have our last name, but treat us like family. And, I, you know, I consider this a spiritual family. And I think during this season where our focus should be on thanking God for the gift of Jesus. And because of Jesus, we become a part of God's family. We move from a creature creator relationship to a father, son, father, daughter relationship. I think, I think during this season, it's important to, to say, God, listen, man, you're my family. You help me manage my natural family. And so during this season, God, when I'm giving to everyone else, I will not forget to give to you. And I want to encourage you, even on this holiday season, to say absolutely 100%. Maybe this, these Wednesday night teachings, or whenever you choose to watch them, have, have been a gift to you all year long. And I'm going to ask, would you consider saying, I want to I wanna be, I want to I wanna give a gift back to the ministry that's been gifting me, this global teaching ministry, which is what it is. Saying, that God put it on Dr. Darius's heart not to confine the ministry of his teaching simply to the local church. That starts there, but not to confine it simply to people that are in New Jersey or in Orlando or, or in Atlanta, not to confine it there, but to say there are people who are outside those physical locations. Uh, it includes them and starts there. But in addition to that, there are people who are, who are in different places in different parts of the world saying this is adding value. And I'm grateful that wherever I am, even as I'm cooking uh, desserts, getting ready for Christmas, I can receive this. And, and I'm going to sow into this. Because we have bought or probably will buy gifts that people are actually going to throw away. Say, and I'm not saying not to do that. <laughs> but I am saying, man, let's, let, let's do that in addition to what we do to God. And do for God and, and, and not, and, and not in, in place of. So that Lord Thursday on the screen, thank you so much for sowing into this ministry. And I'm excited about all that God's doing. Listen to me, guys. Next Wednesday is the last teaching in Wisdom University. 2022, we're doing something new. Somebody put new thing in the chat. I like that. I just came up with that, by the way. 2022. We doing something new. Let's put let's put that in the chat, guys. New, 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 new thing, new thing, new thing, new thing. So I can't wait, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna unveil it next week. I'm gonna unveil it. We're, we're taking it we're taking it to a whole nother level, man. A whole nother level. Let me get. <laughs> I was about to let the cat out of the bag. It's it's gonna be gonna be incredible. And I'm starting a new series the first Wednesday in January. It's gonna be great. But next week we're finishing up wisdom university thank you for giving and sewing a hey, shout out to everybody again who's a part of my mentoring and coaching group daniel's den thank you so much if you want to be a part of that you can go to danielsden.com thank you for everybody that's a part of our text community uh, man thank you for trusting me as, as a as a source of spiritual emotional relational and leadership guidance those are four areas i want to help you in. spiritually emotionally relational and your leadership right and uh, so man, thank you also so much for being a part of that. All right, family. Merry Christmas early to you. Hope you have an incredible Christmas. Love you so much. I want to pray for you. And I'll see you next time. Father, bless every person with the wisdom they need for the season they're in. In 
Jesus' name. Amen.